What's going on YouTube? Nasif here from Click, and today I'm going to be doing, I guess, the iPhone 10 review in 2019. I'm going to be taking a look at seeing if this phone is worth purchasing in 2019. Uh, if you're looking to upgrade your device, maybe you have an iPhone 6 or a 6S or a 7, and you're looking to pick up a new device for 2019. Uh, so we'll take a look at the usual things, build, battery, uh, OS experience, screen, camera, uh, and I'll give you my opinions and then I'll give you the final verdict. So first thing I always want to talk about is the display. The display is awesome, uh, high resolution, OLED panel. The only thing that I didn't like at first was the notch, but you really, honestly, you grow to ignore it after a really long, or not a really long time, for a really short period of time. And then after extended use, it kind of just disappears into the, the, the experience. You don't really notice it at all. Uh, it's definitely smaller than other notches, <clears throat> Pixel 3 XL. Uh, but again, you, you do notice it uh, if you're watching full screen video or if you're playing a game that uses the whole screen, which is pretty much all games. Uh, you will notice the notch kind of creeping into your content, uh, but it is what it is. It's not that bad on a scale from zero to 10, I'd give it like a nine and a half. So it's really not a big deal. Uh, the build on this device, fantastic. It's got one problem with it. It's built too damn well. I'm too scared to use this thing naked and enjoy its full beauty in the world, in the real world. I can only use it naked at home if I'm sitting in bed or if I'm sitting at home, I'm okay to use it naked. But if I go out, got to slap a UAG on, got to slap a speaking case on, got to have some rugged uh, case on there to protect it. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is the cameras. So the cameras on this device, guys, typical iPhone cameras. Uh, you're not going to be blown away by the photos it takes, but you're also not going to be disappointed with them. They're just mediocre, they're whatever. If you compare them to the 10s, if you can compare them to the Samsungs or the Pixels, you'll notice a few minor differences in color saturation and, and color accuracy and whatnot. Uh, but at the end of the day, the differences between cameras nowadays is so minimal, you don't really notice the difference between them. So it does hold up in 2019. If you were to take pictures with this and post them on Instagram or social media or whatever, no one's gonna be like, oh, that's a crappy camera or that's an iPhone 10. They're not gonna know what phone you took it on because all phone cameras pretty much take the same pictures these days. The difference between them are so minimal. The one thing I don't like about the iPhone 10 is portrait mode, especially on the front facing camera. It's just not all that great. And when you have a Pixel 2 XL that takes fantastic portrait mode pictures with just a single lens, it really makes you think, it's like, do you really need that extra lens? Do you really need that face ID tech to take depth sensing pictures, blah, blah, blah. No, you just need the right OS and, and, and I guess optimization to be able to do that. So Apple, you gotta work on that for iOS 13. And speaking of iOS, the experience is typical. It's nothing crazy. It's nothing, you know, mind blowing. It's very intuitive. I really enjoy the gestures. It takes a second to get used to them. If you're used to the home button, you may find yourself doing this to go home. Uh, but after, like I said, with, this, with the notch, after a few hours of using it, you become, I guess, accustomed to it. And then it becomes natural. And then if you end up going back to a, a home button device, you end up, uh, you end up swiping up from the bottom and opening control center and whatnot. Uh, so it's a little bit funny when you switch back to another device and you're swiping up and your control center is coming up. Uh, one thing I don't like is control center up there. Why not just have it down in the corner here? And like no one is swiping up to open their multitasking from this corner. Just put control center down here. It would make life much easier, uh, but it is what it is. Uh, battery life on iOS 12.2 has been much better than it was on 12.2.1 or 12.1.2. Uh, the only problem is, is the 12.2 is still in beta. Uh, so while it's in beta, I don't recommend upgrading to it. There are a ton of bugs and glitches that are, have been happening, but I suck it up because the battery life is awesome. Well, not awesome. I get a 12 hour day and I end the day with about 20%. So if I do end up having, you know, like a really long night or I'm out with friends or whatever, uh, I can still last the night and then come home and then the battery will be dead. Whereas before, if I had that extra, I guess, you know, night or uh, extra time out at nighttime, uh, the battery would be dead by like 9, 10 o'clock PM and then have to be hugging a wall to charge the device. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is just iOS in general. I'll probably make a video going forward uh, about iOS and what they're going to be doing in the future. But Apple, you got to change iOS up, man. iOS 12 is the same as iOS 7, really. Nothing has changed. It all looks the same. It all runs the same. You got to have a full revamp. Give us dark mode on the iPhone 10, please. That would be awesome. Uh, otherwise, guys, that's pretty much it for the iPhone 10. I will cover the build. I covered the cameras, the screen, the battery life, the OS. Speakers are great. Dual speakers. Um, I'd say they're probably up there with the best speakers on the market. Obviously, the 10s and 10s Max probably have better speakers. Uh, but I'd say they're like top five for speakers. I'd say the iPhone 10 in general against devices that are out there is probably like top 
five or six or top six or seven for all categories. Uh, yeah, so it's still a fantastic contender in 2019. So like I said, if you're looking for a device, if you have an iPhone 6 or a 6S or a 7, and you're looking to upgrade and you're deciding, hmm, should I get the 10 or should I get the 10S or should I get the 10S Max? Uh, I personally don't believe the 10S is worth that extra money uh, upgrading to. It's a few hundred dollars that you could save, a few hundred dollars you could put towards cases or just, you know, an Apple Watch, for example. You're really, uh, really, really better off getting the iPhone 10 if this is the screen size you're looking for. If you need a bigger screen, then you're stuck. You got to get the 10s Max and you got to uh, bend over for Apple and let them do what they do to you. Uh, but you can get this thing. I've seen it on a lot of carrier websites for zero dollars. They're clearing out the inventory and I've seen it on eBay and whatnot for sub a hundred dollars, sub a hundred dollars. I wish sub a thousand dollars for a really good condition iPhone 10s. Uh, so if you're interested, feel free to pick them up. Let me know if you do get them. And if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, recommendations, or anything for future videos, uh, feel free to drop them down below in the comments. Uh, I will be having a few case videos, I guess, go up for this device, some new cases I picked up. Uh, and obviously this stuff is mostly compatible with the iPhone XS, so I guess it's still somewhat relevant. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, feel free to drop a comment down below, drop a like on the video, and subscribe to the channel for more content. And again, thank you guys so much. And also just a quick shout out to the subs. Thank you guys for all the support from our 12 month hiatus. Uh, we are back now and hopefully better than ever. Uh, so we'll see you guys in the next video. I'm out. Peace.